Hey, this is Scott from Spinning Wheels Photography, and I was at the International Off-Road and UTV Expo at Westworld in Scottsdale, Arizona this past weekend. And during one of the days I was there, I ran into Charlene Bauer, founder of the Ladies Off-Road Network. You'll find a description down below. I uh, did a short video on her presentation on four-wheel drives and lockers and why they're important in the off-road. So check out the video. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, hey, give me a thumbs down and leave a comment. Thank you. Let's get to the side. We can take these things and put some of them together really fast so you can understand why we would use the snatch block. Or I can explain four-wheel drive lockers and sweep. Which one do you want? Sure. Huh? Split your four wheel drive? Sure. Okay. Cool. Well, I just happen to have a really cool Jeep right here. Alright. So let's talk about four wheel drive. Um. So in a Jeep, in a vehicle, in a four-wheel drive, most all the vehicles that we have, they're rear, rear wheel drive, all right? So your rear wheels have the power. That's where you're going down the road. When you press the button, you pull the lever, you do whatever that you do in order to take it into four-wheel drive, what that now does is that now shoots power into the front axles as well. But that's all fine and dandy until we get into a position like this. And you notice where this tire is up off the ground. All right? So with that power coming up to the front, into that four-wheel drive system, the, the computer says, wait, wait, wait. This is the tire that needs the most help. This one over here. And so it actually sends all the power into this corner. It doesn't equally split it anymore. So four-wheel drive is actually, truly, three-wheel drive when you get a tire off the, off the ground. So maybe you've seen, you've been off-road, or you've seen some pictures, and the guy just has a tire and it's just spinning, spinning, spinning over here. That means that they're in four-wheel drive, but, the, but there's no walkers. There's nothing that's walking it together. So the four-wheel drive system sends the power there, it spins, we have no traction to this tire, so we're not necessarily going anywhere. How are we doing so far? Good? All right. So now we insert walkers. And at the, when we're done right here, right over here at Let's Roll, they have some Yukon walkers on their table so you can actually see what they look like, the display systems that are out. Um, and what that, what it is, is now we're gonna hit our front lockers as an example. It's a mechanical device, so it's gears, and we pull that together. Think about a walker as a dowel pin, just like in our axle right here. even have special pricing on lockers if you need it. So this is a dowel pin as a front locker. Just think of it that way. So now when this tire spins, the other one has to spin as well. It's locked together. Those gears are now engaged. Put us back into this situation where we're having a great Saturday out on the trail. Now when you're in this situation, the power is coming up and it's overriding the computer completely. Awesome, thank you so much. And so now it's overriding the power completely and it's coming into the gear system and sending power out to both of the tires, regardless. And that's what a locker does. So now you have power to all four. It's what we call true four-wheel drive. You hear people saying that? I have true four-wheel drive. That's because you have your front locker engaged as well as your rears. And now no matter what happens with your tire being off the ground, you still have traction over to here. Are we good with that? 
so now with your lockers locked, it can't do that because they have to turn at the exact same speed and the exact same distance. So that's four wheel drive and lockers. How do we do? Everybody look, got it. Uh, if you do not have lockers in your vehicle now, that is something that you can build in. Um, it's a, a conversation that can be had, but it's one of those things too, if you are price sensitive, if you have a budget, you build your rear lockers in first because now you understand even just going over a simple rock garden, rear lockers really help because it's pushing you. And then as you're getting better as driving, you're also adding into your budget so that then you can get your front locker and start doing cool stuff like that. So, rears and then fronts. If you're going in that process of a goal. All right, last thing. Just because it's all part of the same process. So your lockers create this to be a dowel pin this way. Your sway bars is the dowel pin this way. So it's the up and down of the tire. So as you're going down the road and you hit a pothole, one tire is going to go down, the other tire is going to go up. Go down the road, you hit a curb, one tire is going to go down and the other tire is going to go up. It's constantly going like this. In Jeeps, Jeeps mostly, you're going to hear the common terminology, we have to disconnect our sway bar. We disconnect your sway bar, and what that does now is that allows those two tires to be independent so that they can go down the trail independently. It's not connected to where it has to go like this. I hate to go like this because it's not like there's a joint in the middle that allows it to start doing that. Um, so it allows it to go independent, and now as you're going down the road, your tires are able to go up and down and into all the potholes that they need to go instead of working really hard at going up and down. Um, you guys have been seeing probably in the background, they have the flex ramps, the CTI ramps, right? The, all that stuff that goes on. The only way that you can get the big flex would be if you had your sway bar disconnected. The picture of this is actually gonna turn into this tire being jammed up into the wheel well and this one drooping down, right? That's what we would normally see. And that's the sway bar being disconnected. That's allowing that tire to go way up in and this one to droop way down. If it was truly connected, then it would only be able to go at such a rate that it would allow itself. So as we're wheeling, if we're just going down that simple dirt road, you definitely want to disconnect your sway bar because it's a comfort thing very much comfort, um, but then when you're really getting more aggressive, it's giving you that opportunity for that tire to reach for traction that it wants. And that's the, the difference on a sway bar. If you have a Toyota, it's more of an independent front suspension, and so it's doing it itself. Uh, same with UTVs, not a lot of them have sway bars either. Cool. How'd we do? Everybody got something out of that? Yay. Awesome, thank you. Uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about tires. So we do a big... Hey everybody. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you are really interested in it, please give me a thumbs up. If you weren't interested in it and you want to give me a thumbs down, give me a comment why you don't like it. Also too, if you're really interested in my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Help me out here a little bit. And then... Also, too, if you hit the little bell, it'll notify you when my next video comes out. I'm hoping that uh, there'll be some more productive videos throughout the next year. I'm looking at making some changes. So, once again, thank you for watching my channel.